Good morning. Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship, those of you in person here and those that are online. Uh, My name is Scott Beard. I'm the lead pastor here at First United Methodist Church in Kirksville. And it's my pleasure to be with you today that we can worship together and we can lift the name of the Lord. I pray that the Holy Spirit has a movement in your hearts, that something happens in the service today that helps remind you of how much God loves you and welcomes you into this space. It is good to be worshiping together with you this morning. My name is Reverend Jennifer Finley. I'm a Momentum and Discipleship Pastor. I was gone on vacation last week, and it is a joy to be back here in this space and worshiping online with you as well. Um, a couple of notes as we settle into our time of worship. Our worship is guided by our bulletins, either online or what you received as you came into the space. That's where our responses and our readings will be, as well as our hymns, either in the hymnals in front of you or in your online bulletin as well. You'll also find in our pew racks or in your online bulletin a link to a connection card. That's a way to let us know that you are here. It is also one of the best ways to let us know how we can be praying for you and those that you know and love. And we know that our world is a complicated world and we would love to be in prayer for you. Whether those are things that you want to share with the world or whether those are things you simply want to share with your pastoral staff, we would love to be in prayer for you. So we invite you to fill those out either online or fill one out from the pew and stick them in the offering boxes that are back in the gathering space as well. You'll also find in your bulletins that we are heading to a summer that is going to be amazing with a mobile camp coming up in July, and the early bird registration deadline for that is coming up here on the 25th of May. You can register after that, but that is the best way to get registered early and to get the best discount and let us know how many people to plan for. Um, So you'll find more details about that in the bulletin as well, and we invite you to, if you don't have young people in your life, to share that with somebody who might. We would love to have this church building overflowing that week. And if you have questions, um, talk to Teresa Eads, our children's and youth director, um, or call the church office and we can make sure that you have all of that information as well. One other thing we are looking forward to is June 5th, in a couple of weeks, is Pentecost Sunday. It is also the return, the long-awaited return of Gospel Bluegrass Sunday, um, where Pastor Scott and his band, help us worship together with a slightly different style of music. I know before COVID, we all loved that, and we're looking forward to being able to build that into our worship time online and in person on that Sunday. So mark your calendars. We would love to have both our online space and our physical space overflowing that day as well. This morning, as we begin and we settle into worship, we do what we do each week. We light candles, and if you are worshiping at home, we invite you to have a source of light, perhaps a candle, to light it as we light these. We light these, acknowledging that the Holy Spirit is already at work in our midst, that we are called into worship by a power larger than us, that God is already moving so that we might experience the power of God's love. And so now we invite you to stand in body or spirit as we begin worship together for our call to worship. Our refrain together this morning is God gathers us to worship this day. We long to know that we are not alone. God gathers us to worship this day. We long to create community together with God. God gathers us to worship this day. We long to love as God loves. God gathers us to worship this day. We long to know God's peace. God gathers us to worship this day. Come, let us worship together. If you remain standing and take your red uh, hymnals, or if you're at home worshiping, do so with your online bulletin. We're going to sing together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty.
blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Remain standing for a moment as we read our affirmation of faith, which you'll find on the screen or in your bulletins, either online or in your hand. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and to serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. As the dear man's soul 
Amen. And amen. What a beautiful way to come into a time of prayer. This is our time and our worship service where we share together our joys and our concerns. And usually it's the time when we're sharing hard things, and I know that there are plenty out there, but today we wanted to share a joyful thing. I didn't clear this with her, but some of you know uh, that Rebecca, our choir director, is also the teacher of the year for the Kirksville schools, and we want to uh, congratulate her um, and also simply acknowledge that sometimes we believe that our prayer time is only that time to acknowledge those hard things to God, and we do that. But it is also that time to acknowledge the joys that we share together as a community of faith. And so we do that. And we light candles as we do each week, acknowledging those joys, the ones that we can say aloud and share with others, and the ones that are more deeply privately held. And we also light these candles acknowledging all of the places that we have hopes and dreams and fears, the ones that we can only whisper aloud or perhaps we don't even have words and the Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf. If you're worshiping at home, we hope that you also are able to light candles acknowledging that our prayers rise to God as a community across time and space. We hope that this time It's a time to allow those prayers to silently rise to God as we move into a time of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we gather today to worship you, to lift up your name in song and word in scripture. And Lord, we are confident of your abiding presence wherever we are, We thank you for the gift of community of those that are gathered here and those that are in the wider community, both in Kirksville and around the world. Lord, we know that through your Holy Spirit, you are present with us wherever we go, and that if we listen to your guidance, you'll help us to stay on the road road that we should be on. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for this gift of springtime with new life all around. We thank you for the opportunity we have to follow you, to reflect the image that your son has given us, the light that shines into the world through him. May it be reflected through us. Lord, many of us have struggles with home and with jobs or with the economy There are so many things that weigh us down, Lord. And yet you walk each and every step with us. Help us be mindful that each and every person that we know and those we do not know are made in your image. Help us to be open and accepting. Help us to be the people that welcome all into your presence. That we spread this good news of your joy and love and grace far and wide, that others may know of your love as well, that they'll be drawn into a relationship with you because of the grace that you've extended to them. And Lord, let us be givers of grace as well, that we let others know that we are one of yours, through your Son, Jesus Christ, whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue in singing a a hymn that you may or may not know, but you'll catch it. We're going to sing it through three times. It's actually in the Black Faith We Sing hymnal, number 2157. You may remain seated during this time. Come and fill our hearts. Fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Hallelujah. Come and fill our 
our hearts with your peace. You alone, O Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. You alone, O Lord, are holy. Come and fill our hearts with your peace. Alleluia. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, starting with verse 23. Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. and Do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. In some ways, this morning, we find ourselves in the middle of an ongoing conversation. A conversation between Jesus and his disciples. A conversation between God and ourselves. A conversation in and amongst ourselves in our own communities. A conversation of how it is that we follow the example of Jesus when he knelt and washed his disciples' feet and then said, I give you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, so also you must love each other. Now, Pastor Lori began this conversation last week, helping us think about what this command means and what it might look like in our lives today. If you worshiped with us last week online or in person, it's my hope and prayer that perhaps you have kept your eyes open this week for those one or two ways you might love well and the relationships in your life. If you weren't worshiping with us last week, I hope that you might give us a listen online, a blessing of these times that we can do that. I know it blessed me this week as I wasn't able to be here in person last week, but I know that worshiping online later, I was blessed by that message. And so this morning we continue that conversation with Jesus and his disciples, with God and with ourselves. Our scripture from the Gospel of John this morning is still set around that same table with Jesus and his disciples after they have shared that Passover meal, after he has washed their feet, after he has given them the command, love as I love. And it's before, of course, the crucifixion and the resurrection. Jesus is preparing his disciples for what will come, for the fact that he will be leaving them. And I almost imagine this scene as one of those extended after-dinner conversations where everyone pushes back from the table and there is ample time to let conversation flow and let food and words and reality digest. If it were in our own time, this might be the coffee and dessert time. But in that moment, they were letting the reality digest that Jesus wouldn't be with them forever. The reality that they will eventually have to figure out what to do after he is gone. And in that moment, Jesus continues teaching them and loving them. 
Right before the passage that Pastor Scott has read, Jesus sits around that table and he says once again, if you love me, you will keep my command. He keeps coming back to that. As Pastor Lori reminded us last week, it's almost as if if they hear it multiple times, maybe it will sink in. If you love me, you will keep my commands. If you love me, you will love as I have loved you. And he goes on, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, or some translations say companion or guide. I will ask the Father, and he will give you a companion, a guide along the way to be with you forever. And this is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I am coming to you in a little while. The world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. Those are beautiful, comforting words of Scripture. Ones that I have said many times at funerals. Ones that we listen for. Because I live, you also will live, and you will not be left alone. Jesus goes on to say, however, They who have my commandments, all who have heard, not just the ones around this table, those who have my commandments and keep them, all who love as I love, are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of John is famous for tying us in logical circles, I think. But as I hear this, I hear it as a reminder that Jesus' words go well beyond that particular time and place, that they span all the way to us, that we all are encompassed in these words. This is where the story gets fun. This is where I love this passage because what comes next is a question. One of those gathered around the table, we're told, we're told it's Judas, not Iscariot at this point, pops up with a question. But how? How, Jesus? Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us? But not to the world. It's a specific question, but I think embedded in it is a implied What do you mean, Jesus? And how is any of this possible? How are we going to love as you loved us if you're not here? I love this because I wonder if he spoke for others in that room. And as the one who is often the one in the room that asks the question no one else wants to ask, I feel some empathy for him. But it is one of our questions, isn't it? How? How is it that we are not alone? How is it that we can love in Jesus' example? How is it in our complicated, chaotic times that don't seem to be getting any easier, we can follow Jesus' command to love, to kneel, and to wash feet? What struck me reading through this passage this week with Pastor Scott and Pastor Lori was that Jesus does something unusual with the disciples. Often when they ask a question, he tells them a story. Or he asks another question. But he answers this question directly. He says, because I am giving you my community, you can do this. Because I am giving you my community, my community of love. He says, those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. We will come to them and dwell with them. We will come to you and dwell with you. That sounds a little odd to our ears until we remember that Jesus was already part of a community of love, of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's a mystery we don't fully understand, but we know it's deep truth. 
Now, for the nerds in the room, there's a Greek term for this. Um, It's called perichoresis, but really it simply acknowledges that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are in community with each other. So when the disciples saw Jesus go off alone to pray on his own on the mountaintop or on the lakeshore over and over again, when he got away from the crowds to commune, In prayer, he was never truly alone. He was dwelling with the Father and with the Spirit. And here he is saying to the disciples, how is it possible for you to love after I'm gone? After I'm no longer physically here? It's possible because you will have my community. He is saying to us, you have my community of love. We already make our home in you. We dwell with you. And not only that, but also that this community of love through the advocate, the companion, the guide of the Holy Spirit will teach and remind you as often as you need. I don't know about you, but I find that incredibly comforting. We don't have to remember all of this on our own. We don't have to have it all figured out right now. The Holy Spirit will teach and remind as we go along. We're saying to those disciples, you don't have to remember everything I've said to you on your own. You don't have to have it figured out right now. You don't have to remember any of this on the day after the resurrection when everything seems upside down, the Holy Spirit will teach you and remind you as you go along. What a gift. And it would have been okay if Jesus had stopped there. We could have taken that gift. But he goes on to say a few more things to give his disciples and us one final reminder. He says, I don't give as the world gives. I don't give as the world gives. I don't give this task, this new commandment of loving as the world gives. I don't give the gift of community as the world gives. I don't give with strings attached. I don't give with a predetermined overflowing to-do list. I don't give with a pull yourselves up by your bootstraps mentality. I don't give with a figure it out or else mandate. We know how the world gives, don't we? We've experienced those gifts. No, Jesus says, I give out of my overflowing love so that you might love. I give you my community. I give you my peace. So what do we do with that, friends? What do we do with that? Well, first, I think we acknowledge it as gift. We acknowledge it as a gift of the divine community. We allow God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit to dwell with us and abide with us. And that sounds easy to say. It's much harder to do. I know that. It requires an intimacy with God. It allows, requires us to be vulnerable, allows ourselves to be vulnerable with God not just individually, but collectively, to allow ourselves to be in community in the way that Jesus was in community of love. It it means allowing the Spirit to teach us and remind us of the ways of love over and over and over again. And maybe some patience with each other and ourselves in the process I know that I, uh, I like to have it all figured out, friends. I like my to-do lists. And I'm not sure I'm always amused when the Holy Spirit does her thing and teaches me and reminds me of things I need to learn over and over and over again. And yet that is part of this gift of community. And in the process, in the process of us simply opening ourselves to this gift of divine community, God starts to create community within our hearts and our souls, within our communities. 
God starts to create love in ways that maybe are imperceptible at first and then are overflowing in the same way that the love of God in God's self overflows. Now that sounds all well and good, but what does that practically mean? Well, it means in part that we find ourselves at this table every single week whether we are physically gathered in this space, whether we are gathered online, whether we are bound together in time or outside of time. Because you see, at this table, this is where the overflowing love of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit meets us in predictable ways every single week. We refer to this as Holy Communion because communion is the same root word as community, right? We're brought together in this community of believers. We're brought together for all. And one of the things that's so important about this table is it's not the table of First United Methodist Church Kirksville. It belongs to the world. It is the Lord's table. It is for open for all people. And I love the image of it maybe extending infinitely each direction. And each and every person of the world can gather at the same table. And so we encourage you to participate in this, this sacred moment with Christ. That you acknowledge your community with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And you, and you, and you, and you, and all of us here. So we gather. We prepare to come to this feast. But as we do so, we have a prayer of confession. It reminds us that we are not always all that God would have us to be. Let's read this prayer of confession together. Holy, Holy God, God, we, we confess, confess that we often act as though we are on our own in this, this world, believing, believing we, we must love through our own power. power. Forgive us, free us, us teach us, and remind us that we are a part of your community, community of, love. of love. Hear this good news. Even now, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are at work in and through us. We are already and always part of God's community of love. We, we are, are not, not alone. alone. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. amen and amen. And with that affirmation, we invite you to share signs that show each other that we are not alone. The past, the peace of Christ, either in the comments online or here in this space to greet each other with the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Peace, peace of, of Christ, Christ be, be with, with you. you. On that night that Jesus was betrayed, he met in the upper room with his apostles. He met to celebrate the Passover with them, to celebrate the fact that God's community was never broken, that God was always there through spirit and truth, that God was with them through their journey in the wilderness, and God is with us today. And no matter where you go in this world, no matter where you are, God is there, welcoming you into this community with him. It was during that meal that Jesus had taken off his outer garment and got on his knees and he washed the feet of his disciples. Something that surprised them. And they resisted a little bit. But, they, but Jesus says, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part of me. Because we must allow ourselves to be served by God as well. And sometimes that's hard. But he was modeling what it means to be a servant leader. To lead others through your acts, through your humble acts of service. And it was also during that meal when he said, I give you a new commandment, to love one another as I have loved you. That's a tall order for us, and yet it's the way to perfection, is seeking to love one another as Christ has loved us. But during that meal, Jesus took the bread and he picked it up and he broke it and said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat all of you. In a similar way, he took the cup and he said, This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the remission of sins. Whenever you drink of this cup and eat of this bread, do so in memory of me. 
And so as Christ picked up that bread long ago, we lift our bread this morning, trusting in the power of the Holy Spirit to bring us together as one body. As Jesus had lifted the cup those many years ago, we lift our individual cups, confident that the Holy Spirit will draw us together, each and every one, that we too are drinking from this cup of God's grace. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and juice or crackers or whatever is assembled on the altars of those worshiping online. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit enters these elements and as we receive them, that we know that Christ is within us, that we may have his strength and courage and community and love and grace to go forth into this world, to spread this good news of God's love for all, to help shine the light of Christ into the darkest corners of, this, of our world, the places where people are reaching out for help. Help us to be the people that give them courage and hope for a new day. We lift these sayings in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. And now, with joy, we unite our voices together to bless our meal with the words of the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. And now, let us share this feast of love together. For those online, we invite you to receive, to partake now with whatever you have at hand as you hear these words. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Praise God. Amen. For those who are here in this space, we invite you forward here in a few minutes to at the direction of the ushers to receive a gluten-free cracker and a juice cup to kneel as long as you would like at the altar room. Come, all is prepared.
What a joy to be in community with God and with each other in these ways. We invite you into this prayer of thanks together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us, one body gathered in you. Grant that we may go into our days in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you would take your red hymnals or your online bulletin, turn to number 451. Let's stand and sing, Be Thou My Vision. it might feel as though we are leaving community but no we are preparing to walk into the heart of God's community in this week whatever it may bring know that you go with the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit hear this blessing may the Lord bless you and keep you may his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And may you dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen.
Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us.